Hey, it's Erin. Across social media, you'll see experts, influencers, gurus, all will present you with highlighted, curated images and videos. You're not going to see their setbacks. You're not going to see their flaws or their struggles. If you're looking for motivation across these platforms, it can actually have the opposite effect. It can make you really look at your life. It can make you look at your blooper reel and compare that to someone else's highlight reel, which is not the best way to go about doing things. If you're struggling, if you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you're lacking motivation, this video is for you. I wanted to share a bit of my story and some of the struggles that I went through in order to get to where I am today. And I want you to know that if you're feeling stuck, the best thing you can do is just take a tiny step forward because each tiny step forward is going to bring you closer to your goals and it's going to build momentum. Step upon step gets you moving faster and faster. You see the trophies and the magazine covers. None of that would have been possible had I just stood there, had I stayed stuck. And and hopefully sharing my story will help get you unstuck and help you realize that whatever it is that you wish to accomplish, it will be yours if you put your head down and don't pay attention to everyone else's filtered, highlighted, highlight reel and do your own thing and focus on getting the things accomplished that you want to accomplish. My story, it's of course starts before 2008, but that is when I got into bodybuilding competitively. And leading up to that, they say that when you're looking to achieve a goal, you're either running towards it or you're running from something, you're running away from something. I was running away from something. I was compensating and I had weights. I had the gym as really the last thing in my life that I could rely upon. And I had hit rock bottom in every single aspect of life. So anything that you could measure success in, I had failed in and pretty much simultaneously. So we'll start with the personal life. I had low self-esteem. I didn't really value myself. And so I allowed people into my life who didn't value me either. And they just reinforced the, the bad thoughts that I had about myself and made me feel worse about myself. And in fact, they abused me. I went through two restraining orders and I actually had to call the police a few times and I, I was in fear for my life with, with the last relationship and I just, I didn't know where to turn. I went to a women's shelter to, to try to get away because of course he knew where I lived and the shelter and the gym were the two places I could go to where I felt safe. I had short periods of time where I didn't have to look over my shoulder. I didn't have to wonder if I would need to fight or fight for my life. Well, the next girl he was with, he shot twice in the chest, killed her. That could have been me. And it wasn't. And, and that was the first light bulb that went off was that I was lucky. I was lucky to be alive. I had a real estate brokerage. And at the time, the real estate market had tanked. I mean, this was 2008. It was a huge market crash. And I lost everything. And I had a big house that I built. I couldn't afford to keep the power on. I would sit in the dark in the living room with no furniture, crying couldn't put gas in the car. And so I failed at business. I failed at personal life uh, and I couldn't control myself either. I, I turned to food and I was first withholding food. I was anorexic. And then I realized that I became so skinny just from looking at a picture that I started stuffing my face. And so I became bulimic. So I was at both ends of the spectrum and having the issues with food made everything else that much worse because if you've ever tried to turn to food for comfort it's temporary and you always feel worse afterwards and 
uh, just developing that that just toxic relationship with food, it, it made everything so much more difficult. So, of course, I failed in that aspect. And thankfully, with bodybuilding, I ended up going pro at my third show uh, because I had been lifting so hard. I ran track in college, so I already had a good base of muscle. And I could see the the door start to, to open for me. I could see a small crack of light. And since I hit rock bottom in every aspect of life, I had nothing. I had no one to rely upon except for myself. I decided that I would take small steps, little steps forward each day, and that I wanted, that I would be the best in the world at something. And that was my goal, was to win Olympia. And here <laughs> at the time, living in a small town of Ocala and not having a penny to my name, it seemed like a ridiculous goal. But I had my first year as a pro and I, I did pretty well. And I was going into my second Arnold Classic and the gym where I trained, the only place where I had solace, where I had a safe spot, kicked me out. And they kicked me out because a lot of girls and guys were, were trying to go pro at the same time. And it came easy to me. And I, I think that they didn't like that. And so they grabbed me by the arm and physically escorted me out and told me not to come back. And uh, I was getting ready for the 2010 Arnold Classic. And I was doing a little bit of, of quick math. And I realized that I just needed to get second place and that would give me enough cash to get out of town to put everything in my car and just go somewhere else and start over and I didn't have a place to train I ended up training in my parents garage my dad had this old Pacifica multi-station gym that was sort of terrifying and um, you know looked like it would give you tetanus <laughs> and, and I, I did my best I, I trained as hard as I could in a garage and and I ran hit and I, I just put my head down and went into the Arnold Classic and ended up getting second place, which was exactly what I had <laughs> wanted to do. Uh, I don't know why I didn't shoot for first place, but here we go. So the mind is a, is a powerful thing. And, and when you set your sights on something and you're consistent and you, you have that why, you know why you're doing it, uh, you know that you are the captain of your own ship. And again, with those small steps every single day, it will pay off big time. And so I was starting to see that. And I loaded up my car with my Arnold check and I sold my house for a loss in Ocala. And I ended up moving to Tampa and I found a 400 square foot apartment and I didn't have hardly anything, but I had my freedom. And that was enough. And that year in Tampa, uh, I was training and I was training for the Olympia. I had my first pro win and I ended up winning my first Olympia that year. And, you know, looking back, it, it happened relatively quick, quickly. And looking back, it happened relatively quickly. But each day seemed like an eternity. And especially at that starting point when I had absolutely nothing and I had people after me and I was in fear for my life, I, I just didn't think that it would ever get better. And I had thoughts of giving up. And if I had, we wouldn't be here today. None of this back here would, would be here. And, you know, it... Not that it matters so much, but it, it's just, um, let's see. Not that all of this stuff behind me matters so much, but it, it's just their tokens uh, and reminders that when you take your life into your own hands, you take responsibility and ownership and you make that push, no matter how small it is, even if it's just writing down a quick list of goals, writing down your why, 
why do you want to achieve something? And it's okay if you're running from something. It's okay. Because sooner or later, especially when it comes to the physical goals or physique goals, that strength that you're going to build in the gym equates to strength everywhere else. You're going to hold yourself differently. You're going to walk with your chin up and your chest up. And you're going to value your physical strength. And it's going to give you mental strength. Conquering the tangible challenges of the weight room equates to being able to conquer the intangible challenges of life. And again, if, if you're struggling, if you're stuck, do one small thing today. Just one. Write something down. Make a phone call. Sign up for a class. Ask a friend for help. Whatever it might be. Just take that small step forward and keep moving forward. You're in total control and you are the author of your story. Don't forget that. So hopefully my story helps you. And if you've been watching for a while and, and maybe you haven't heard my story or maybe you've heard parts of it, uh, maybe you, you see uh, the, the fun videos, the workout videos, or you see the accolades, but know that for almost anyone who has achieved anything, that they have gone through struggles, that they have had major setbacks, and that it has made them not only stronger, but it has made them more resilient and more tenacious. So don't don't back away from your struggles, push through them. And I, I promise that whatever you're looking to achieve, you will have it in your hands. You'll have it. So thank you for watching. If you've watched all the way to the end, I love you and I am rooting for you. So go get them. Thanks for watching. Until next time, train hard, y'all.